Good morning, Magicals, and welcome to Tuesday. At least this week I'm right on track with my days and I'm not thinking it's Friday on Tuesday. Okay, right. Um, thank you for all joining me again. Guys, please like, sub subscribe, and share. Um, we want to get as many people as we can onto the channel. Um, and also, it does help me um, know that you are enjoying it and that you're liking the content. Otherwise, I need to change things up a little bit. Okay. Right, guys. So, our chakra for today is the throat chakra. We seem to be coming back to this a lot, and I think we're going to be visiting quite a bit in the next couple of weeks because we actually, we're in Mercury retrograde, which is all about communication, and we're also in Gemini season, which is hugely about communication. Okay, so this is Vasuda. I don't know if you can all see that. Um, it's our throat chakra. This is about authenticity and communication. Um, it's, you know, it's um, the kryptonite for this is lies. We've spoken about this, um, and this is also a very creative chakra. Okay, um, it connects with, especially like when you're working with things like Reiki and all that, it connects with our sacral chakra and the two try and draw energy from each other. Obviously, if one is out of balance, it's, it's not going to work 100%, but um, they it's very strongly connected to the sacral chakra. Okay, all right, so this is Vasuda, and our card for today is, oh, interesting, Quest. Okay. So I'm being told here that this is now a quest for our authenticity. Okay. Oh, that's a big one. Um, we are in this period now, and I really do feel like I'm repeating these messages a lot. And I, I forgive, forgive me if I am, but I have to go with what spirit is giving me and the cards are giving me. I can't suddenly make stuff up, unfortunately. Um, but I'm being told very clearly that this is about now releasing everything that's no longer serving us. I, I feel like I should trademark that that phrase because it just seems to come out my mouth all the time but this is very very much a strong energy of moving into who we meant to be that stepping into our power that you know like really just grabbing life by the horns and doing what needs to be done in order for us to be where we want to be now quests are never easy they're always challenges they're obstacles always 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 that's what makes them so um dramatic and triumphant at the end when the victor succeeds because they've they've had to go through all of these tumultuous situations and these you know difficult terrains so this is a this is what I said to you this is this is a big card it's not a small card um and I know that we focus on these daily things but I think if we look back over the readings there's kind of like a collective energy of this already from the past readings um if you haven't seen any of the other readings go back and check they are timeless I mean you'll get the messages you need when you need them and just have a look. There's this really big, strong drive to move forward into our standing. It's stripping us of all that's inauthentic. And please understand that the underlying energy of all of this, take all the retrogrades out, take wherever we're at out now, we are shifting to be fully present in the age of Aquarius, which is the age of enlightenment. Okay. So in order for us to be on the path to enlightenment, we need to strip the, the layers of our ego in order to get there. All right. So pack your bags, people, road trip. Yay! And you always take a fat friend because there's always good pet course. I'm just saying. Just saying. Okay, right. We asked for um, how we do this, and I got the moon because it's not like you know, mystical at all. All right. Um, in the tarot, this is about um, things being hidden and things needing to be revealed, and, and, and. Now, what I'm hearing very loudly and very clearly here is that. We need to not rush this process. We not need to, we need to not because I think he's trying to say this to me because I've got no patience. Um, that you need to try and fly ahead and have all the answers all at the same time. He's like Kelsey saying to me, it's not like that. You of all people know this, and I'm like, yes, I understand that. Um, what happens is you, you need to, in fact, this is the phrase he's given me, sorry. That which needs to be revealed will all be revealed in good time. Okay, so as you can see, by the light of the full moon, things are revealed. The full moon illuminates what's in its path, right? You'll see clearly. So what I'm hearing here is that with the moon, um, we are needing to use our intuition, okay? Understanding that in the tarot, this is a, a, a water card. It's Pisces and Cancer. I kind of go with Cancer kind of vibe because it's our ruling planet. Um, but this is about using our intuition, okay, and understanding that the more we tap into our intuition, the more we use our intuition, the more illuminated the answers are going to become, okay, when we follow our guidance, our inner guidance, I always say our intuition is our inner GPS, 
So it cannot go wrong. Okay, it is designed, our intuition is designed to work with us for our specific path. All right, so use your intuition and it will all be illuminated. The answers will come at the right time. That's never the answer we want, let's be honest. We always want to know that it'll arrive on the 14th of June at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, but apparently not. Okay, so then I said, um, uh, ask for some advice. And this is what we got. High Priestess. Okay, another black cat. Eh? Black cats are about magic. I'm just putting it out there. I'm just saying. Um, harness mystic power. Okay, right. So again, this is going inward, tapping into our magic. Okay, we all have it. It doesn't necessarily mean cauldrons and broomsticks, although they are so fabulous. Oh my God, they're fabulous. Um, but this is more about us tapping into our inner knowing, I'm getting told, but also our inner workings. So what that means is we forget, okay, we very often forget that, yes, we carry the strife of the ancestors, but we also carry their triumphs and their learnings, all right? And what this means is when we tap into harnessing that, that inner power, that mystical power, what we're actually doing is we're tapping into all of the stuff that our soul has carried from our lifetimes of learning and from our ancestors' times of triumphs and learnings, what's worked, what hasn't worked, okay? So when you go into meditations, just call on the ancestors. Call on your ancestors for assistance. Um, you know, do some rituals to call them in if that's what you need to do. I always call my the, the ancestors in just generally. Um, and as I work with the directions when I'm doing my rituals, I obviously call the ancestors in from each of the directions as well. It's quite nice to have them around um, helping out as well. Okay, so this is about tapping into all of that inner knowing, that stuff that we carry with us in our soul that we forget about. But the minute you start tapping into it, it just starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, you know, and it starts opening up for us. It's like this little like crevice that opens up and suddenly there's like all of this information and all of these magical jewels of like mystic and magic and that are there just for us to use and to actually be able to move forward with. Okay, so tapping in, a lot of us doing inner stuff here. Now, unfortunately, retrograde season is prone for this. So, okay, a lot of inner work here, inner, inner, inner knowing, inner trusting. <laughs> okay, so I said what is the I, I actually didn't ask what the outcome was today because I'm sick of Mercury already and I was like well, what's the point of all of this <laughs> so clearly my communication needs a bit of work and this is the card that comes up well-being okay now if you look at this card there's someone lying on the grass. She's lying here on the grass, grounding herself. But check out all the little magical fluff around her. Not to mention the fact that there's yet another full moon here. Okay. Um, the moon really is about intuition and magic and mystery. And it's one of those really beautiful, like, mysterious energies that we carry with us that affect us even when we don't realize it. Okay. So for all of those people out there that don't go into woo-woo, but they, like, feel a bit emotional around the full moon time, I'm like, uh-huh. Hmm. Just saying. All right. This card is about it's a complete sense of well-being. And I know that feels like a bit of an anticlimax because we're all like waiting for like, you know, the world cruise or the, you know, the pots of gold at the end of the rainbow or whatever it is. But well-being is it. When we are completely in a space of well-being, our chakras are all aligned, life is calm, we we in balance mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Life flows for us. Manifesting then becomes that. It doesn't take long to get what we want because we are completely aligned and we are completely aligned with who we are meant to be. Okay? Really and truly aligned with who we are meant to be. When you are on your soul path and where you are, you're heading to where you're meant to be, things just fall into place for you like crazy. Really do. Doors open. They actually don't just open. They fly open for you. So although well-being, for me, it sounds a bit like meh, it's actually a very, 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 very important space to be. Very important space to be. <clears throat> and then I just thought, okay, well, since we so much moon energy going on around us at the moment and all of that, because we've still like, I mean, it was only, I don't know, it was a week ago for the full moon, but we're starting to really feel the, the waning of it. And then it's going into um, new moon on the 11th. So there's a big new moon coming up and I'm starting to feel the different phases of the moon more profoundly. So maybe that's why I'm just saying new moon, full moon energy. I asked which energy was around us. This is the divine feminine. And we got Lolita, the red goddess. Okay, again, check out all the butterflies for transformation. Always point that out because it's so, so true. Okay, now Lolita looks like she's dancing around with all these like sparks and things like that. But she's carrying an arrow, a bow and arrow. 
<clears throat> I don't know if you can see that. The arrows, the bow in her hand, okay. Now, I'm going to read the message to you. It's, it's actually quite a lighthearted message. But <clears throat> what Spirit is also saying here is just a little reminder. Where you where you direct your, your arrow to, all right, let it go. Direct and, sh and, and shoot, okay? And let Spirit do the rest, okay? And I think what we tend to do is we try and, we try and take into account every factor that could possibly affect that arrow once we've let it go, and that's becoming a problem. We're holding on too tight. So he's saying, Kelso's saying to me when I say he, sorry, it's Kelso, um, he's saying, yes, we do need to do the work. We do need to do this. We do need to do that. We need to get focused on certain things. But by the same time, if we are doing what we can and surrendering the rest, spirit will actually step in. And, you know, things like wind factor and all of that, we can't take into account once we've shot that arrow. Let spirit do that and let spirit get the arrow to where it needs to be. Okay. Right. So the message here, so that was just a side because, you know, Kelso is verbose today. I don't know what's going on with that. It's going to be a long day for me. Um, Lalita the Red Goddess, playfulness is a spiritual power. Laughter leads me back to the light. Okay. Now, um, what's happening here is that on all of these journeys and all of the stuff, please hold, your call is important to us. Okay, on all of these journeys here, the quest, the going inside, the using the intuition, the working on ourselves, it gets very serious. We can take life too seriously and we can take our healing too seriously. All right, this is just a reminder to add some playfulness to it, just to laugh a little bit and to see the funny side of stuff, okay? Because it's really, really important. And spirit has a great, great, great sense of humor. All right, so just lighten up a bit. I know that these things are not easy and that we've been called to big things at the moment, but just take a breath and lighten up because at the end of the day, that's what's going to get you further than... Um, they're not. Okay. Right. So our mantra for today. Sorry, for those who haven't seen last yesterday's one, I did put the mantra and the seed sign in the description. Sorry, I completely forgot that. I am a good listener. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Now, interestingly enough, the, the throat chakra is a balance. In order to be a good communicator, you need to be a good listener and a good speaker. Okay. So what this is saying is that when you're trying to listen to your intuition, don't be clouded by what you think is being said. Just quiet in your mind and actually listen to what is being said, okay? And listen out, I'm hearing listen out for signs. Um, some things that people may say, there may be songs, as, as lame as that can be. I've had many, many signs because music is huge for me. Many, many signs where music um, will give me signs on something, all right? Um, so please, just be a good listener. Right, and then to connect into our seed sound for the day, it's hum, okay? So spelt H-A-M like ham, but pronounced hum, okay? So guys, have a beautiful, beautiful Tuesday. I will, I'm going to try and get the Twin Flame reading out today, but I'm, it's looking partly cloudy with expected sun showers on that front. But we'll, I'll do my very best, otherwise it'll be um, in the next day or two. But have a beautiful, beautiful day, and at absolute worst i'll see you tomorrow morning for your chakra read have a beautiful day guys see you soon